welcome back to my channel uh, today hitting you up with another book review today this one's been uh, I'm a little late on this one today we're talking about uh, League of Legends Ruination this came out in September I bought it I bought the day it came out and I started reading it and I was like oh this is pretty good like, I like this this is good but like I've got, I'm reading like four books now so I finished a few of those other books got back to this and finished it and now I'm here for the review uh, I was so excited to buy it that I went in the store and bought it. Didn't realize there was this uh, damage on the cover here. I'm a little annoyed by that, but nothing I can do about it now. Uh, this was written by Anthony Reynolds. To all the research I could look up, no relation to Ryan Reynolds, famous actor Ryan Reynolds. And here's the cover. The cover's cool. Here's the side. Here's the back. And one thing before we really get into like the meat of the story, something... I think it's really cool if you take the uh, slip cover off. You have this cool like a little symbol here for Viego sword. There's a side. There's nothing on the back. I think more books should do this. Have like a lot of books are just like blank. I think it's really cool that they put this here. If you don't want the slip cover, here's the inside. That's pretty cool looking. Same thing on the back here. If you take the case, you open it up. It's pretty cool here. Oh, the book's about to slide off my foot. That's all right, or off my leg. We got, uh, there's Viego and Callista. And somewhere on here is Thresh. You see his lantern, I'm gonna look. Where, oh, he's way, he's way, like it's really hard to see. But he's like, that's like him. Maybe you saw, maybe you didn't. All right, I'm, not, I'm, I'm done holding this thing up to the camera. So yeah, I was, I'm really, I was really excited for this book. League of Legends, at my core, I do like League of Legends. It's frustrated me quite a bit, but I do like League of Legends, and I like the characters. But I'll also admit, when it comes to the lore, I'm kind of like 50-50. Like, I know some characters, I know a little bit of what they've done, but as far as, like, the, the deep lore, I've not spent hours upon hours reading the lore. So, like, uh, going into this, I kind of was like, well, maybe it'll just be a good story, and I won't have to worry about it. Uh, I was also a little, I don't know if misled was the right word, or maybe I just got an idea in my head and, you know, wasn't thinking, but I thought, so Ruination, you know, a few, I think this was last year, League of Legends did an event with a character called Viego, and here's his sword, and so I was like, oh cool, a book about Viego, like that's kind of cool, well really it focuses more on, uh, Callista, um, she is more of the main character. I mean, Viego is still there, and, and near the end, I will talk uh, some slight spoilers here, just a heads up. But near the end, we get on the, we kind of get the whole group together. Um, that's cool. But I was thinking like, oh, this is going to focus more on Viego, but no, it's more about Callista. But I mean, that was still all right because it's like Viego is there. He's he's there. You know, it isn't completely uh, gone from him. It's the the two most focused on characters are Callista and Thresh, which if you played League of Legends, you know. You know, Thresh. Thresh. I used to play a lot of Thresh back in the day, so I was like, oh, this is pretty hype. I didn't know his real name wasn't Thresh. He actually has a... Uh, let me see if I can if I can find it here. It's like Urlock Grey Ale or something like that. I can't... I can't say it. But uh, we got a whole host of... We got a whole host of people in this book. We got Rise. We got Hecarim. Hecarim, that's his real name. I didn't think that was his real name, but it is. We got Hecarim, Rise... We get a, a, there's a ton of little references. We get a reference to Zillion. We get a reference to uh, Yorick, which I'll come back to that later. And a Gwyn reference. So if you've never played League of Legends, there's those little references that might go over your head. But uh, if you have played, you know, extensively, like myself, I was like, oh, that's a little cool reference. That's cool stuff right there. Uh, what the, the story is, uh, Viego's wife has been poisoned after an assassination attempt. And Viego has sent uh, Callista on a mission to try to find the Blessed Isles, to find the Waters of Life, to hopefully save uh, Viego's wife's um, life. Um, I think if you've never played League of Legends, this is still a really good fantasy story of adventure. Again, those references kind of go over your head, and like a lot of video game books... The ending is a little bit like, like it's good, but it leaves it open. Like, are they going to do another book? Are they going to do more with this? Are we just going to have this one book that has a, 
incomplete ending in a way. I thought it was really well written. I'm going to put this back here because I'm kind of tired of holding it. There we go. I thought it was really well written. There's a lot of times that I actually forgot that it was a League of Legends book in a good way because I've read a lot of, uh, you know, novel versions for video games. And I'm like, this is not very well written. You can tell that they, you know, there wasn't much care put into this or, you know, they weren't watching this closely as to if it was accurate. But this feels like there was a lot of care and a lot of passion behind it. Anthony Reynolds, he did write a Kindle book about Garen. I've never read that. That came out before this. So it seems like, and it seems like uh, in the description, they said he has played League of Legends before. So it's nice to have someone, you know, with a little bit of background in the game also writing the book. That sounds like a dream come true for, for me, honestly. One thing, the, the, it, it is kind of a lengthy book, but the one thing that helps it is it moves really quickly. There's always something happening. We're always moving something forward. Sometimes to the detriment of the book, there's the part where after Callista, she goes to find the Blessed Isles, she does, and then she comes back. And, like, the whole kingdom is, like, like there's, like, riots and, like, everything is destroyed. Not everything is destroyed, but, like, things are definitely not as good as they left. And there's, like, you know, Hecarim's going across the country just wreaking havoc. Not quite. He's still human at this point. But uh, I was, like, whoa, dude. You didn't even tell us about that. We just kind of came back and here we go. Another character, I kind of mentioned this earlier, one person that also features heavily in the book is Thresh. And... He's really done really well. I could just like hear his voice in my head whenever I was reading his parts. He's very creepy. And he and he is one of those villains where I sort of understand where he's coming from. Definitely don't agree with the actions, of course. But I think a lot, I'm like, you know, maybe if someone had just, you know, maybe if they hadn't pushed him so far away. Maybe I mean, if they just helped him a bit, maybe he wouldn't be like this. But he's insane. He's creepy. He's chilling. He's just an all-around bad guy. One thing I was kind of worried about is when, here's a spoiler coming up, when he uh, transforms into the Thresh we know from the game, I was worried they were going to do some stupid thing where he was like, oh no, what have I become? But it, when he becomes Thresh, he's like, oh yeah, I'm powerful now. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I forgot to mention we get a, a Senna in this, in this book. I was about to say, in this game. That doesn't make any sense. So that's all well and good. I like the final battle. And I like, you know, Callista. Here's what, here's another spoiler thing. They set up, like, Callista's troops fighting Hecarim's troops. And there's this kind of, like, subplot about, like, you know, Hecarim and his group of dudes are all, like, the rich folk. Where Callista and her group is kind of, like, poor or more lowborn. That's what they say. That they're part of the, like, you know, not the higher class of society. And that's kind of a subplot throughout the book. I think could have used just a little bit more uh, tension because at the end it's like Hecarim is fighting Callista's uh, troops and I was like you know you guys might not like each other because you know you have your high class but you were both on the same side at one point now all of a sudden you're ready to kill each other like maybe there could have just been a little bit of animosity there between the two it just seemed like a like a bit of a jump like oh we're, we're doing this now everyone's fighting alrighty I do think lore is important I think that's the reason this book was you know the reason any of this is here is because there's this cool lore that people fell in love with. I do think it's alright to bend the rules a little bit, but I will admit that there's so there's been I've seen a lot of complaints online that apparently in the lore, Viego and Yorick are enemies or they have some kind of, you know, intense hatred for each other. I was wondering if they were gonna do that in here, and we get a quick Yorick cameo. He shows up, he, you know, tells Viego that the queen is dead, but he's like, Don't worry. She's smiling. She's happy. Everything's good. And Viego starts to mourn. And then Thresh creeps in. And he's like, hey, actually, I can save her with this. They've been lied to you. And Viego's like, I'm not too happy about that. But that was all we get for Yorick. And again, I'm kind of thinking, like, are they just going to ignore that? Like, are they just going to start a new storyline? I mean, I guess. That's cool. At least that we got the, the cameo, though. But yeah, overall, all the references were cool. And I like the action, I like the fighting, I like that things moved along quickly. And things like, you know, is a war, like Calista brings up a lot that they, that they, uh, Camivore, where she's from, that they wage all these wars for these objects, these religious artifacts, these, you know, ancient objects that, you know, aren't, that's not really what they're doing it for. It's more of just like, they want to just conquer everyone near them, but they just make up this thing like, oh, actually they took this, you know, religious chalice. All that I thought was pretty good and you know, made me think a bit. 
So there is a good L, there's a good mix of like just a fun action story of you know sailing across the ocean and being attacked by sea monsters, but also a little bit of not not overly pretentious uh, stuff to make you think. So overall, it was a, a really fun. I really liked it. It was a really fun book. I really hope they come back and do another one because this ends pretty abruptly, where uh, Viego takes on the role of you know the ruined king. You know, Thresh becomes Thresh. If you again, if you played the games or you know about the lore, you know what I'm talking about. And they're you know, like sailing away from the island. Our heroes are sailing away from the island, and they're just like they just left it at that. Like he's he's there, and again, there's this whole thing where he like. You know, Viego goes across the world doing his doing some bad stuff, and I I kind of want to see that you know turned into a book or an animated series or something. I, I forgot to mention this up top. I want to say this up top, but you know if you really liked Arcane, I also think this is a good you know if you like that world that has nothing really to do like with Arcane. Like a lot of the characters in Arcane, pretty much none of the characters in Arcane are in this, but uh, it's it's similar to that I would say just just because it's a story in the world of League of Legends, so. If you're looking for more stories in League of Legends, I say read this book. Um, overall, I'm, I really enjoy it. I recommend it to fans of the game. I also recommend it. I, I would still recommend it to people who have never uh, played the games or you know read any of the lore. But uh, I'd have to give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it five smites out of five, if you will. Five smite spell abilities. But yeah, thanks to everybody for watching my review. Sorry that it's so late. Uh, it's like. I just had all these other books I was reading. Also, life gets pretty busy, I tell you what, you know. Every time you think, hey, I'm going to have some free time, bang, no free time. So, so yeah, if you've read uh, Ruination, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. I'm sure I forgot to mention some things and whatnot. Viego is cool. I think Viego, they really sold him as just, like, this charismatic, like, he can be this very sad man whose, you know, wife is dying. But he can also be this very charismatic, like, you know, he's got a winning smile, he can sell you anything, or he can, you know, convince someone to do anything. So, uh, yeah, Ruination. Gonna have to give it five smite abilities out of five. Uh, hope they do more. And, uh, yeah, I'm really happy I bought it. That's about all I got to say. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.